A client of mine reached out to me recently with a bit of a challenge. They were recording some software simulations, specifically training type software simulations, where the learner is guided but needs to perform the steps themselves. And one of the situations that, uh, that my client ran into was that part of this uh, simulation uh, needed the learners to drag an object from one location over to another. Now, software simulation doesn't have this capability built in by default, but Adobe Captivate does. So I thought of a way to combine uh, drag and drop interaction with software simulation, and I thought I would share the results with you. So here's the situation. Uh, as you can see on my screen here, I'm all set to record a software simulation. Uh, in this particular web application, uh, the user is required to drag an image of a company logo to upload that company logo to replace what's here now. And uh, in this example here, I'm going to be doing a uh, software simulation training. And I'm going to go full screen because I want to capture this background as well as the application as well. So I've already captured the, uh, the logo I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and hit record. And at this point here, I'm going to just click the Upload Company Logo link here. Now this creates sort of this pop-up where you must drag and drop a file in. Now normally what's going to happen here is rather than to capture the steps for the learner to replicate, it's going to basically just record a full motion recording, a little movie, if you will, of me performing this step. And that's of course not what the client wanted. And then, of course, the final step is to submit that image for upload. And then I can finish this off by clicking on, let's say, the next field, get one more screen capture, and then I can simply hit the Captivate icon on my taskbar to finish recording. So here it is. Here you can see the problem. So here is that full motion recording. If I double click on my timeline there, we can play this back which is great, it shows the process, but again, my client wants the learners to perform this task themselves. So here's my workaround. What I've done is I've created um, a version of this little tiny image right here, and uh, I've saved that to my desktop to import later. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just delete this uh, full motion recording slide here. So I'm just gonna right click on it, and delete, get rid of that. So here's where we wanna end up, and here's where we're starting. So I'm gonna bring in that image now, image from the media icon on your toolbar. There it is here, I've already edited it with uh, transparent background, and here's the image. You can use Photoshop, you can use whatever, whatever image editing software you wish. And you just wanna place it just above the icon as it appeared, uh, or in this case here, the image as it appeared uh, on my desktop. Now we need a place to drag and drop it to, so I'm going to place a shape over top of this, um, this item here. Ultimately, I'm going to make this transparent, but I'm going to keep it visible for right now. And what I'm now going to do is uh, click on Interactions. Click on drag and drop to open up the drag and drop wizard. And uh, let's build a drag and drop, a simple one-to-one -one drag and drop here. So the first step is to specify your drag source. Here is that, uh, that image file from my desktop. Click next. And now I'm gonna identify where I need to drop it to, and that's this shape that I've created here. Click Next, and the third step in any drag and drop uh, interaction wizard is to identify the correct answer relationship by clicking on the little icon on your drag object and bringing that arrow all the way to your drop target. Now, this created a submit button and a success and failure caption. We're gonna do some editing to that in a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Finish there I have my, my uh, drag and drop here. So the first thing I wanna do actually uh, is to get rid of the submit button. We'll just drag that into the scrap area. 
Let's go back up here now. I don't need a success caption, so I'm going to uncheck the success caption. For the failure caption, I'm simply going to change the text to read try again. And we don't need a failure action because we're going to select infinite attempts. That gets rid of that. And if they get it wrong, we're going to simply reset the uh, interaction. And we're also going to check auto submit correct answers. The one thing I will do is change the success uh, action to go to next slide. So it'll be a little bit more instantaneous there. And that should do exactly what we need to do. I am going to select this drop target here and we're going to go to properties and make sure that that's completely transparent. So let's test this out now. We'll do a preview in HTML5 in browser. So here we are. Here's our simulation here. We'll upload the, uh, the image now. And I can drag it as part of this interaction. This is me dragging it to here. And now I can submit that and continue with the rest of the training. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com Follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.